Hello, my name is Rose. I am dressed like Rose Fortune today. Some say she was the first policewoman in Canada, actually northern British North America, because Canada became a country on July 1st, 1867, three years after her death. Rose was also a mover. Her moving company survived from the early 1800s until 1984. For Rose had a hard early life. Let's start at the beginning. In 1774, Rose Fortune was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her parents were slaves for the Devone family. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is right here. She escaped slavery with her parents during the American Revolution from 1775 to 1783, and they became black loyalists. This means they supported Britain in the fight against the American patriots in exchange for the promise of freedom, land, and three years of provisions in the future. But they did not exactly get that. Rose immigrated to Annapolis Royal Nova Scotia when she was 10 years old. Her family appears in the 1784 Annapolis Royal Muster Roll as a child over 10 years old of parents, fortune, and wife. She and her family boarded a ship in New York Harbor to get to their new home. Annapolis Royal Nova Scotia is right here, and New York Harbor is right here. It was not easy to be a black loyalist during and after the American Revolution. During the war, escaped slaves were in danger of being killed as they supported the British and of being caught by their loyalist or patriot masters. After the, lo after the war, loyalists were treated horribly. Their freedom houses and land were taken. Sometimes they were tarred and feathered or even hung. Black loyalists were always scared of being taken back to their loyalist or patriot masters. So, after the war, 40,000 loyalists escaped to the northern British colonies, later known as Canada. 3,500 of those loyalists were black loyalists. If you were a black loyalist, you were, you were a free slave or an indentured servant, or a slave working for Caucasian loyalists. Rose Fortune was free because in 1784, Annapolis muster roll, her, she and her parents were on a list of free Negroes. Rose and other black loyalists in the North did not experience freedom and prosperity as they were promised. The British government promised each loyalist family 100 acres of land, plus extra acres per family member, and three years of provisions. The black loyalists only received half the amount of land promised, sometimes after waiting years for it. Once they received land, they often could not afford to have it surveyed, and so could not build a house on it. Instead, many black loyalists lived in holes stuck in the ground, which were covered with stick roofs. The land given to... Black loyalists was often rocky and poor quality, so they turned to other work besides farming. Some of them became indentured servants and slaves again, mostly because they could not read and understand well enough the work contracts they signed. Wages for black loyalists were one quarter of the wages for Caucasians. Because of this, Caucasian citizens in the of the North preferred to employ black, the black loyalists, and they were accused of stealing jobs. Things got worse in Nova Scotia over time. At Shelburne, a black loyalist Baptist minister was punished by Caucasian loyalists for baptizing a Caucasian woman. woman. Shelburne is right... Shelburne's right here on the map.
They tore down his house and twenty other black loyalist houses, and chased him into a swamp where they beat him with sticks. Many Caucasians in the British colonies thought of black people as property. Some black slaves escaped to Birchtown, a town in Nova Scotia where many black loyalists lived and hid there amongst free, the free slaves. Uh, Birchtown is right here on the map. There were, there were many riots between black loyalists and Caucasian citizens. So the British military enforced a desk to dawn curfew for blacks. After the Shelburne riot, there was no more land given to blacks either. As a result, in 1792, over a thousand black loyalists left for better life in Sierra Leone. Rose Fortune was very determined to survive during all this hardship. She had at least three children in the early 1800s and began a baggage carrier company. She took luggage and provisions back and forth between ships, inns, and houses by wheelbarrow. Rose Fortune probably had a wheelbarrow like number four, but if she started her business before then, then she might have had one with a wheel in the back instead of with a wheel in the front. Her grandson-in-law, Albert Lewis, Albert Lewis, loved horses, and so when he inherited her company, he changed the wheelbarrows to horses and wagons, and the company was known as Lewis Transfer in 1871. Then his grandson, James Lewis Jr., changed the horses and wagons to trucks and continued the company until he died in 1960. Lewis Transfer was then sold and run until 1984. In addition to her baggage carrying company, Rose ran a wake up call service for ship and ferry passengers. She made sure they did not miss their trips their trips to places like St. John and Digby. Finally, Rose was a police officer. She patrolled the town and waterfront of Annapolis Royal, enforced curfew, and kept people in order. She often wore a man's coat over her dress. In 1852, when Rose was 78 years old, a lieutenant colonel wrote about Rose helping him leave the terrible inn where he was staying. He wrote, she had a small stick in her hand, which she applied lustily to the backs of all who did not jump instantly out of the way. Rose was firm. Rose Fortune is what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a police officer. She inspired people to do good things after she died on February 20th, 1864, at about age 90. First, the Fundy, Ro the Fundy Rose Ferry Boat, which travels between Annapolis Royal, Nova Scotia, and St. John, New Brunswick. Today was named after her. The ship travels between St. John, um, Nova St. John, New Brunswick, and Annapolis Royal, Nova Scotia. Secondly, there is a scholarship in her name set up with the Association of Black Law Enforcers. Thirdly, Rose Fortune's great 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 granddaughter, Doreen Lewis, was the first female black mayor in North America. She became mayor of Annapolis Royal in 1984 and received the Order of Canada for her um, work with race relations, the advancement of women in business, and the promotion of the arts. Finally, many of Rose Fortune's descendants work in trucking and shipping today. This is a picture of the wheelbarrow that I built with my family. I made it out of 2x4s, screws, and shiplap. It works.
Here are some of my references. Thank you for watching.